Hey, what is up guys? My name is Harrison Brown, the One Entrepreneur. Now in this video, I want to talk to you guys about a crazy horror story and how you need to be very careful on who you hire as a contractor or somebody to do work on your assets. So when I say assets, I mean your website, your social media, anything like that. So let's begin with the story and there's going to be a lot of lessons along the way. So I had a customer of mine reach out to me and they said, hey, you know, we want somebody to write our product descriptions and full disclosure, my company, we do SEO. We don't really write product descriptions for people because there is an art to writing really good product descriptions and same thing with copywriting. We're not the best copywriters, but we write really good content for people and help drive tons of traffic. So they reached out and they were like, hey, you know, I really want somebody to write this you know, product descriptions for us, can you help us out? I said, sure, you know, we, we wrote product descriptions and they were actually pretty good, um, but they really weren't exactly dialed in and, and definitely needed a little bit of tuning up because like I said, we're not product description writers. So she goes, okay, good, I'm gonna go find somebody. Now, typically there's, there's three main outlets that you can go or four main outlets that you can go find somebody to help you with your stuff. Number one is, is usually Fiverr, seems to be a pretty popular platform. The other one is Upwork. There's many other similar things. I, I consider Fiverr on the cheaper end, Upwork on the higher tier end. And then three and four are like just random freelancers or agencies where they specialize in that kind of thing. So there are product description agencies and all that kind of stuff that you may want to check out if you want to write a product description or anything like that. So she had reached out to me, it was about a Thursday evening, and she goes, hey, uh, I need access for this person to get into our website to write the product descriptions. Now we had everything for the most part done, images, the whole nine, right? And I go, okay, sounds good. And I was like a little curious to know where she had gotten this person's contact information. Now rolling back even more, there was a referral given to us by that person, and that person ended up going and hiring somebody on Fiverr, right, to go build a website for cheap, right? No, I'm not hating on Fiverr. I happen to use Fiverr a lot for our stuff in our business and things like that, but you gotta be really careful on who you hire and what level of access you give people when they're building your stuff or doing stuff for you. So I said, okay, sounds good. I, I kind of expressed my concerns. I'm like, hey, I don't know who this person is. They could probably just send you what they need and you can send us it or they can send it directly to us and we can put that product up there. Now, fast forward, Tuesday afternoon comes around, I go and my normal checks, right? I go make sure that all the websites we work on are all good, everything's working right, people's rankings are going well, uh, even people that we normally don't service on a regular basis. I just make sure I go in and make sure that everything's running correctly, right? I don't want any of my customers, even if they're not paying us to monitor it, I just wanna make sure that everybody gets the best level of service and at least your stuff isn't breaking, right? So we go in there, Tuesday morning comes around and things didn't seem to be loading. So I was like, oh, it's kind of weird, whatever. Uh, you know, it's probably just my computer. Maybe it's a cache issue or something like that. So later on in the afternoon, I get a text message saying, where's all my stuff? What do you mean, where's all your stuff, right? Her website looked fine. I just thought maybe things weren't loading in time or whatever it was, right? We built it on Wix. Every once in a while, Wix does have an issue. So I said, okay, that's, that's a little weird, right? So it turns out that over the weekend, uh, that product writer, right, happened to not write the best product for this person. And that my customer had explained to them that, hey, they didn't really like their stuff. Could they go back and revisit it? Well, it turns out over the weekend, this product person went in and deleted everything on her website. Now, thank God that Wix has a great backup system and we were able to recover about 85 to 95% of the website. Phenomenal. But we did lose some stuff that Wix doesn't back up, so products and things like that. And moral of the story, is when you're hiring somebody, there's a couple things that happen in this whole thing. One, we should have never given access, but our customer requested access for it. Now it's protocol for us to never give access to anybody unless asked by the customer and why. Now this customer was very um, prominent and, and was like, nope, this is who I want, this is what I want them to do, all that kind of stuff. There was no ifs, ands, or buts about it. This is somebody that, hey, this person needs access, I want you to give them access, please do it sooner than later. I need them to get into the system to make changes, right? Now, very skeptical, we still did it because that was what the customer paid us to do and asked for it, right? And still, something seemed a little off. Now, normally I would just say, hey, have them send us their stuff and we'll go put it up there. It's just, it's usually much easier. It's almost cheaper because we could just do it much faster than anybody else can. And then you don't have to worry about breaking something accidentally. This person said, nope, have them do everything. Now we had kicked them out Tuesday afternoon, but all the damage had been done. So now that customer is responsible for paying us to go fix everything that was broken because of their contractor. So when you're hiring a contractor and I say a contractor, an outsource contractor, doesn't matter what they do, who it is or anything like that, vet them first. Please, 
Like just because they're cheap doesn't mean it's gonna be good. I'm sure everybody's seen the little art where it's, you know, it's a tattoo artist and he's got this beautiful unicorn and he's drawing, he's tattooing like this, you know, a, a three-year-old's version of a, of a unicorn on somebody, right? Somebody's always willing to do it cheaper, but that doesn't necessarily mean better. When you're hiring somebody, you need to make sure that one, you're getting the services that you are promised and two, that there's no way for you to get hurt. Now, we really don't let anybody into the websites. We most of the time don't even let our clients into, into their own websites unless they really specifically are pushing for it just because 99% of the time we give access to our clients, they end up breaking their own website and then we have to end up charging more money to go fix it. It's usually much easier for us to just go do it ourselves. And believe it or not, most of the time, we just don't charge for it if it's something that's gonna take five minutes. Um, but essentially what they had done is this person had access to everything in their system. Now, thank God that Wix has a backup because if it didn't, that whole website would have been down. The reason why this is important for you listening is because not every single time or not every platform has its own built-in backup. Now, some of these major brands, Squarespace, Wix, Weebly, um, Shopify, they all have built-in backup systems. But for things like WordPress and some of these lesser known name systems, they might not have a backup system in place. Or if they do, it's very infrequent. Maybe it's once a month, right? So imagine doing a whole bunch of work over the course of a month, dozens of hours of time that gets reverted back and now you lose everything. That is a serious concern and one that I should not be taken lightly because this person was so persistent on having an outsourced contractor go into the system and make the changes themselves so that way it was a more laissez-faire and, and they didn't have to do anything and we didn't have to do anything that it ended up hurting them pretty badly. Now, thankfully, it's only a couple hours to fix everything, but now it's the whole process of, can you send us the images all over again? Can you do this again? Can you do this again? Can you do this again, right? And that person now has to take time out of their day. So a 50 or $100 or, or $200 purchase of a product description, because they're really only writing about two product descriptions from what I know, but now they have to go, now we have to go back and redo everything all over again in a lot of the website. Even though the main formatting is there, we still have a lot of work to do. And this is all ca caused by a 50 or hundred dollar contractor. Now was the contractor completely wrong for going in there and vandalizing everything? Absolutely. Is there going to be legal action taken? Probably, right? But regardless of who it is or what it is, that is a serious concern. Now this person happened to be on Fiverr and I'm not hating on anybody, but more than likely they're from overseas. They're probably not a local US residency. So now if that person wanted to go to court, if my customer wanted to take that person to court, that might go into international courts or something like that. Now, I don't know all the legal ramifications of all that, but you were talking about some serious concerns on both parties of integrity for, for the outsourced contractor and then our customer who's now gonna be responsible for fixing everything and paying for it, which is a major, major concern. So I don't know, I hope this video helps, but be really careful when you're hiring somebody, you know, make sure they're trusted, make sure they're vetted. If you have somebody that's already used that person or something like that, chances are probably pretty good you're safe. But for the vast majority of pe people, that's not the case. And you really have to be careful of who you're hiring, how much you're paying them, and what level of access they have. Now, this person really only had access to the front end of the website just to go in and modify those products, but they still did a lot of damage in that area. Thankfully, they didn't have access to the whole website, and if they did, we would be in way deeper water. But they had access to what they were supposed to have access to, but they deleted everything that they possibly could to get back at this person. Now, all it was was bad feedback saying, hey, I don't really like your product, and that was enough to set them off. You have to be so careful when you're hiring somebody because if they have access or you accidentally give them access to everything, they could legitimately go in and completely destroy whatever you have. If you don't have a good backup of your system, you could lose everything. Now, like I said, in this case, or in this scenario, we really were able to keep about 85 to 90%, and there's only about 10% of, of, of fixes need to be made. But still, those 10% of fixes equal hours of time that one of my employees or myself am spending that we now have to bill for because of a client's mistake. So if you're getting anything out of this, be really careful on who you hire. Make sure that you hire somebody that you trust, know, and, and ultimately, Make sure you restrict access to only what they need. If it's somebody that you really trust and you wanna give them access, then by all means. But I really, I, I, I can't stress enough that you need to be really careful on who you give access to your stuff to because it could cause way more headaches than, than you bargained for initially. My name is Harrison Mandelman, an entrepreneur. If you guys found value in this video or you learned something or 
you're going through this right now, please hit that like button. If you're going through something similar to this, I really feel bad for you. Let me know in the comments down below on what system your website's built on. I'm very curious to see where you're having issues. And other than, other than that, hit the subscribe button, like button, notification bell, all that kind of stuff, right? And then, uh, yeah, 120 videos in 120 days. We're about a week and a half in, and we're going strong. So, actually, when I'm recording this, we're a week and a half in, but you'll probably see this in about two two weeks or so into my into my 120 day challenge here. But other than that, I'll see you guys later. Till then, bye.